in the literature on how people forget. So if I gave you a list of, I don't know, 100 words, and we all sat here and we memorized 100 words, here's how you would remember it over the next couple days. Whoop. By the time you went to bed tonight, you'd remember 20-ish. By the end of day three, you'd remember two. You'd just be like, yeah, it was words, who cares? Now, if I took those same 100 words and I turned them into pictures, so instead of just saying cat, I gave you a picture of a cat, here's what your memory would do. Oh. So a little bit better, plus when you go to bed and then wake up, you'll remember almost twice as much when you wake up than when you went to bed the night before. Huh. Now, if I take those same hundred words and I weave them into a story. So instead of saying cat, tree, house, I say the cat jumped onto the tree and then fell off onto the house. Watch what happens. Even better. Why would pictures, so I, this is good, have a discussion Take a minute to talk with the people around you. Why would pictures be better than words? Stories be better than pictures? And what in the hell is this bump after we go to bed and wake up the next day? When you hear the word cat, it's just cat. But when you see a picture of a cat, it's not just cat, it's this cat. Boom, it's got a thing, it's got details, it's, it becomes contextualized. So then why are stories better than pictures? All your, a story has its own built-in context. If I show you a cat, it's this cat on that mat, and you're like, oh yeah, I've seen cats before, that's cute. But if I turn him into a story, now you don't have to worry about anything. The links, all the associations are already there. If you think about it, it's funny. What a story does is you don't remember the facts, you remember the links, and the links then bring back the facts. Boom, it becomes a chunk. Those hundred words become story. Got it. Context is how you fight against this. The less context things have, the more I'm just going to categorize it as, yep, that was device. Yep, that was illness. Yep, that was this. And then you start making stuff up because you just live in the category. But context is how you start to create new categories and say, OK, this is different. I have experiences with cats before, but this cat is unique. I don't have a cat jumping on a tree falling on a house. Never seen that before. Hmm. Time for a new category. So with that in mind, what is this? This is your new category. What happens when you're asleep? We dream, for the most part, unless you've been drinking too much, you dream. Maybe you do when you, no, you don't. You pretty much toast at that point. The dream, so far as we think, is what's going on is you're now taking these new context facts, you're comparing them to other things you already know, and what you're doing is building a new concept. And when you have that new story, that new concept, more of those facts come online. Not because you remember the cat, but you remember the links, you remember the context, you remember the point of it. So this just goes back almost always, if you want to fight the category problem, teach the why, not the what. What's going on? Why is all of this important? What's the underlying thing? Don't just tell me the facts. Don't just give me a list of words and then ask me if black was on it. And when I say yes, you go, no, it wasn't. You were wrong. Turn those, give me the context of all of this stuff. And that's how I'm going to say, no, black wasn't on it because the story says, the reasoning behind it says black should not have been there. Teach the why, not the what.